At this point, we'll do things that are very like what we did in cDNA cloning. Before I go on, I should say that each plaque represents a single recombinant molecule of DNA that was in that original virus. And so if you have enough plaques, enough different plaques, you have what's called a representative genomic library. You have a library containing, ultimately, all of the genomic fragments that you could generate by doing this kind of cloning. The question is, which plaque contains viruses with a recombinant globin gene? If we follow up on our isolating a globin cDNA, we can use that globin cDNA as a probe to isolate a globin gene. So that's what our hybridization probe will be. It won't be a small synthetic oligonucleotide made radioactive because very small fragments of DNA, uh, 15 to 25 or 30 bases, do not effectively find targets in large DNA fragments. So what you can use is the whole globin cDNA instead, which is perhaps 20, 30, 40 times as big. And so we've already screened the cDNA library. We have that cDNA for globin. We're going to make it radioactive. So we have a radioactive probe. We make a replica filter of the plaques, which is done very much the same as we did for the colonies when we made the cDNA library. So go back and look at that. What you end up with is a filter replica of the plaque. You soak that in a solution containing the radioactive globin cDNA probe. You wash off the excess and you put the film on. After exposing, you develop the film and you see if any black spots form that would have been lain over one of the plaques. And here, sure enough, one did. You go back to the original dish with plaques and you can pick a few phage out of the lysed spot and use those to reinfect fresh cells and grow oodles and oodles of globin gene. And at that point, of course, you have many options, one of which, of course, is to sequence the entire gene. The first time this was done, in fact, using a globin gene, the, the structure of an intron was revealed. Remember that globin genes and other eukaryotic genes are split genes. They are composed of exons and introns, the exons being the coding regions, the introns being the non-coding regions. We knew this from hybridization experiments using electron microscopy. But the very first time the globin gene had been isolated and sequenced, you could actually see the sequence of an intron. In fact, the sequence of the two introns that are found in most globin genes. Each clone, by the way, was, is going to have not one or two genes, but probably dozens, if not sometimes hundreds of genes in a single fragment. And what you'll be doing when you probe for a particular gene is trying to find the fragment, which has perhaps several dozen genes on it, but included in that several dozen genes, is the one you're looking for.